Hi everyone, Nicole van der Hooven here. This is day five of my week of testing with K6. And yesterday what I did was I was able to figure out how to pipe my results, my load testing results from a local execution out to my account on K6 Cloud. I also recreated a stepped load profile that I commonly use in JMeter, um, and, but I recreated it in K6 and I ran it locally. Today, I want to go over a few other options that um, a few coworkers of mine told me about for like different ways I could have recreated the load profile. Um, both of them are shorter than the way that I did. And I also want to actually run a test on K6 Cloud, but kicking it off from my local uh, machine through the CLI. So I was talking to my friend Sima about this. Sima Aronson also works at K6. And I told him that I was kind of playing around with load profiles and I told him what I had done. And he said that there is a way, he had an idea for how you can kind of condense that code. If this is something that you do a lot, perhaps you could just use this bit of code, which I'll show you. So instead of, instead of having the scenarios here, um, he has this little snippet so he would have a separate function that takes care of the, the step scenarios. And then you would just add this line. So I would add it here. So the second way is from Pepe Cano, who commented from my last video that I could have actually also used stages. So I looked that up and this is what it looks like. So this is very similar to what I did just a lot shorter <laughs> and what this does is it allows you to set each of these stages each of those steps as stages separately so for this one this this first part of the test would ramp up from 0 to 10 users for three minutes and then there's another line here that says that that the level of users 10 would maintain for another five minutes. So you can kind of make it go up and down here. So all of these ways are perfectly valid for, for trying to define your load profile. Choose the one that makes the most sense for what you're trying to do and gives you the most flexibility. I'm just going to go back to what I already had and then now I actually want to run this in the cloud. So far, I know it can be kind of confusing because I was looking at the results in K6 cloud, but that actually isn't running on the cloud. And when you look at the run in the, in the site, you'll actually see that this was local execution. So you'll always be able to check here and determine you know, if you've forgotten where you ran it. I do want to mention here that you do as much as possible want to standardize where you're running. So you don't want to be um, running, you don't want to be comparing something you ran locally to something that you ran on um, a fleet of cloud generators. And the reason for that is variability. You want to reduce the variables, kind of like how I was talking about um, trying to maintain the, trying to come up with a baseline number of users and duration and the transactions you're using and all of that, and always just sticking to the same kind of formula. In the same way, you want to, to be running on machines that are as identical as possible because, you know, maybe one, maybe your local machine has half of the CPU that your fancy pants cloud generators do. That's going to show up in your test results and it might give you false positives or negatives. So I already have logged into the, to my cloud account. That's how I was able to pipe those results out. Um, but I think that instead of, normally it's K6 run script.js, this time it's just K6 cloud script.js. So let's go ahead and try that. K6 cloud. I imagine that right now the cloud load generators are being spun up. There's authentications involved. Um, the script, the copy of the script is being transferred over to that load generator. And let's head over to the cloud account to see if we can also see it here. 
it should, yeah, so it's already initializing there. Yep, so it's allocating server still. Okay, so it's starting now. Um, I'm actually going to stop this because I forgot that I had put, I, I was messing around with the number of virtual users here, so I'm going to quickly abort the test. So I don't actually want to test this site and bring it down. This is the test K6 site. But you can see here that where it said local um, execution, it now says regions Ashburn. And I saw in the docs here that you can optionally choose to, to specify a, an, an availability zone within AWS to, to run it on. This should be as close as possible to your actual user base. So if you're an American company and you're a, a, an online store and most of your, um, your clients are actually coming from within the US, then you could choose, you know, load generators that are in the US, maybe you do 90%, um, spread them across the continent, and then do 10%, so 5% from Europe or something like that, and 5% from Asia. The distance between the user and your servers will also make a difference um, to your response times and their, and ultimately their user experience. So it's really cool that you can um, kind of adjust K6 and your load based on that. So that wraps up my first week with K6, both the company and with a load testing tool. Now, by no means is this series meant to be like an exhaustive overview of everything that K6 has to offer because I'm not there yet. This was more about me taking you along for the ride as I got caught up in, in K6, at least the basics. I will probably make another video um, once I've had time to kind of process everything I've learned and also compare it to other load testing tools that I've used in the past. But until then, thank you for watching and sticking with me throughout the series. And if there's anything in particular that you want me to cover in the future, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Thank you, everybody.